And we are streaming. Stand by. And good afternoon, everybody. This is Richard G., and this is Jersey Talk Radio, radio worth watching. I'm sitting here with uh, Janet Maddalena, who's my first guest today, but I also want to recognize that across the board, working the board and stuff, is my partner, Bruce Pearson, who's not going to talk today, but uh, he's here also. Janet, I, I guess what I wanted to say is that probably everybody in Hunterdon County and out in the outskirts of Hunterdon County knows Maddalena's Cheesecakes. Well, um, we've been baking cheesecakes for a long time, and... Um, before we bake cheesecakes, my husband Gene, who uh, is responsible for the recipe for this cheesecake, was born in Hunterdon County and went to school here. So when we opened our business uh, in 1982, a long time ago, um, the way that he helped people um, get familiar with our cheesecake was to give the cheesecake to just about everybody that he ran into. <laughs> um, back in 82, we didn't have internet, we didn't have any money, and so we couldn't afford to advertise, and the way that he um, went about business was to take a cheesecake with him wherever he went. If he went to the dentist, if he went to the plumbing store, if he went to buy welding equipment, wherever he went, he took a cheesecake. And it wasn't very long before everybody had tried the cheesecake or had heard about the cheesecake. So it was a good way to do things. At, at the time, I was a little nervous because <laughs> we didn't have much experience, but it seemed to come back tenfold for us. Um, and over the years, we've done wedding cakes for people. We've, we've been selling the cheesecake in so many of the local stores especially the shop rights and um, we've gotten to know um, people in Hunterdon County and they've gotten to know us and, and it's been a good experience for us. And you know that's that was probably the best way to do it because I can just equate being an artist and if I don't go out and tell people and show people and stuff nobody ever drives back my driveway and says can I see your artwork. Right. Exactly. So you've got to let people know what you're doing mm -hmm. and I don't. I, I think it's a perfect way of doing it. It's like what we do a lot today is networking, mm -hmm. and in some ways, that's what he was doing. I think he was ahead of his time in so he many was. ways. Yes. Now, why did he get into cheesecakes? Well, he was a chef, and um, he had been. We when we first got married, we worked in this um, in this little restaurant. Um, uh, he had been working as a chef in country clubs, and you know, doing a lot of catering, and he really enjoyed that. And we had an opportunity in 1980, uh, when we got the, the year we got married, to um, go to work for this little restaurant in Somerset. And the deal was that if you helped uh, buy the equipment, set up the restaurant, and run it, you could cater from there and advertise, and it could be your ca the and catering is the yours. And use the equipment. Right. Yeah, so we sure. we basically were able to sort of get a, you know get started a little bit. It w it was um, in Somerset on uh, in Greenbrook and uh, on in t on two hundred two. So we ended up um, that restaurant did not uh, stay in business for more than about it. It was a, not a just a restaurant. It was a seafood. Um, wholesale and retail seafood store with okay. and they asked us to put in a little takeout restaurant but the, the the for Jean the motivator was to be able to do the catering and start you know to get a business going so when we were um, creating the menus for that place the cheesecake was developed and back then we made six cheesecakes a week that was it yeah how many do you make now <laughs> we make uh, we make probably a thousand a day we could make a thousand a day we don't bake every day but we you know and we could do more if we needed to but um we basically one bowl of of our cheesecake um is about 120 cakes so really? depending on how many we need what's going on what flavors we're doing uh we we're putting out quite a few but back in in the beginning it was just you know for this little takeout restaurant so that we had a dessert one of the desserts that we offered and um people loved it and one of the uh, gentlemen that was selling us he was uh, worked for the purveyor that we were per were buying our, our ingredients from Gene sent a cake home with him and he went he and his family went nuts over it and every time he came to visit us he he would say 
you know, you need to do this. You need to, you know, make this cheesecake for, for restaurants and, and, you know, people would love it. It's better than anything out there. And at the time it sounded just, you know, completely crazy because we, you know, couldn't even imagine doing that. And so it really wasn't his idea to create cheesecakes. Gene? Yeah. Mm, not really. He had other things. He had, well, but, yeah. But this is kind of how life throws it yeah, at you. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like we were like, oh, let's, you know, go off and get into the cheesecake business. The cheesecake business, uh, basically, when we ended up leaving there, it was it was to build on the che the catering business that we had started mm -hmm. during that, that year. And the cheesecake seemed like a perfect fit for, you know, a way for us to balance Sure. You know, until we built up a reputation and got known so that we could have a product that we could sell, you know, in between, in between the, the catering jobs. So how, I mean, we should say that your husband has passed. Yes. It's about been six years ago? Six years ago, October 23rd. How did he feel about the fact that cheesecake became, <laughs> uh, Madalena, his name was <laughs> basically cheesecake. I know. And he was very proud. He was and very proud. And, um. I think that, um, you know, he, I don't think it was what his original plan was at all, but um, for Gene to be able to um, create something like this and go out and, and have people enjoy it, he, I think he felt great that he could make people happy and that he could, you know, um, appeal to, the, to their, you know, the, it's like comfort food, sure. you know, people loved it and people, um, constantly you know he got praise and and uh, I mean I could tell you some funny stories uh, but sure. I, I sure. the thing is that it's the people that understand when life throws them that little twist to take it and run with it mm -hmm. and he was one of those he did. he did and that's what most successful people do because there's a lot of successful people out there that I'm sure didn't start out thinking I want to be this mm -hmm. and ended up being something else yep. because that's the way life did the yep. twist and Gene did the, thing, the, the he thing. He took it and he ran did. with it. And of course, you know, there were there were other parts and, and Gene loved, he was a hands-on guy. Um, if we had to buy everything new, if we had to pay other people to install and fix I don't think we could have made it in sure. the beginning, but he was, um, he and his father and his brother, very handy, very, very intelligent and very um, capable. And so when we b purchased equipment, we took it apart, we brought it home and we put it back together again. And if it broke, he fixed it. Now you were telling me before that the ovens can be as big as a room. Mm -hmm. That's right. Which is amazing to me. Yeah, they, we have oven, the shelves, you know go around like this they're a big you know carousel okay so and they move while the they move okay. we put the, and we bake the cheesecakes in a water bath so we have big pans that go in and then we fill them up with about an inch of water and then the cheesecakes go in so they're not a springform pan some people make cheesecake in a springform pan okay if you did that the water would seep in but um uh we we are able to um do them in a water bath and that it, it, it we're able to control the cooking a little bit better and keeps it from cracking on top and turning brown and is it, what did you say before you can do a thousand cakes a day oh yeah easily easily yeah <laughs> that's amazing to me i remember years and years ago we baked a, a much smaller cake for uh, a particular customer and we worked around the clock for 28 hours straight, if I remember correctly. And I think we did something like 28,000 cheesecakes, and it was just grueling. And I don't ever want to go back and do that again. It was awful. Now but like, we have this, done do, it. Do you like cheesecake? Well, I, I think our cheesecake is delicious. I, I do, too. And I don't... But I'm wondering... I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> when you're living with cheesecake, whether you really right, I I would say I taste, I taste, um, I taste to make sure that that um, it's consistent, and I taste it, especially if we're playing r with a new flavor. Um, I don't, I can't say that I sit and have a piece of cheesecake every day, um, but I definitely um, enjoy our cheesecake and appreciate it. But it's not something that um, that you know a after a while you. you you don't eat 
uh, the thing that you, you know the food that you're making every day sure on, on a regular basis it's like a plumber doesn't usually go exactly. home and work on the plumbing exactly <laughs> <laughs> but now Jean passed away of cancer six years ago right. who runs the business now me <laughs> me and I have my <laughs> sons are bo both of our boys uh, are um, have been working you know in the family business uh, with us for almost you know knee high sure, and, and sure. they are very involved and very much a part of everything um, we work together and we make it work uh, so it's been tricky it's been um, a challenge sometimes it, it's it's been um, you might come and hear us yell <laughs> at each other it's it's not that easy to work as a family um, in a family business and be mom and boss I if I I wish I really don't know what it would be like just to be the mom because we've we started the business before they were born and they started to work for us when they were you know too young to really be working and so you know they've we've there's never been a time where uh, there w wasn't some kind of pressure on them from me come to work on time you know what did it what is it that you know has to be done today you know give them a hard time I'd love to just have been just mom okay. but unfortunately the Madalinas are business and it seems like the business and the family are very much um, one yeah, I don't think I could have worked for my mother. That would have never <laughs> would have never worked out. Yeah, yeah. It, it has been a challenge. <laughs> it really has been a challenge. But you know, it's gotten better. It was a little. It was really tricky after Jean died, and um, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. <laughs> but we've come a long way. And and, and, um, and to tell you the truth, I'm really sorry because I had w was going to ask you before we did this if I could talk about that. Oh, that's okay. That's you know, it's so fine. I, I didn't want to put you on the spot it's or anything. Fine. Absolutely fine. But um, now, how, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you about getting, do you sell cheesecakes? We s yeah, people can come to us to purchase a cheesecake if they'd like. Uh, people can find our cheesecake um, at, at many of the local stores, it's in particular the uh, the shop rights of of uh, the Colorado family owns mm -hmm. the shop, mm -hmm. the five shop rights, and we're in all of them, and we're happy to be part of their family um, but if anybody wants to come out to Ringo's we're almost always there you want to give the address we're you want to give a phone number 415 route 31 north Ringo's New Jersey our phone number is 609-466-7510 uh, our website is www.madalinascatering.com now let's talk about I know you want to talk about you've got something coming up for Thanksgiving Yes, we do. Let's talk about that. Okay. I think this might be the 18th year in a row that we've been doing a Thanksgiving din dinner. Um, basically, this is... We yeah, I left mine across the table. That's okay. <laughs> you can share. <laughs> <laughs> I left but my glasses over there, too. So <laughs> <laughs> We're good. I'll read it to you. Yeah, okay. Um, every year, uh, we offer to do this dinner for our customers, and we are cooking our turkeys on Thanksgiving Day. The, we ask that people give us, uh, place their orders and pick a time between 11 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon and our birds are scheduled to go in the oven based on the weight of the bird and sure. the time they're coming to pick them up. Okay. So they're not just all going in at one time, they're going in, we have a schedule. Um, and my husband's uh, cousin, Mick, who uh, was a physicist at the time at Sloan Kettering, um, we spent a lot of time with him when Gene was back and forth, and, and I said, I need a way to get this organized. Will you help me? So I always love to tell people, a physicist helped me write this formula. Good. And terrific. And so he did. And so we're able to take all the turkeys and put them on a list with the, the actual weight of the bird and the customer number and the time they're coming. And he wrote a formula that I can plug in, and it'll tell me what time that bird needs to go in. So once I have that column with all the times that they have to go in, I put them in order based on earliest sure. to latest. And then we 
you know, they're all numbered and they go in the oven. And so the night before Thanksgiving, everybody gets the birds ready and the, the racks that are going in first are closest to the door and vice versa. They go in the oven and they, they come out. When they come out of the oven, we put them in an insulated box, wrapped up, ready to go home. Then all the sides are ready for the customer to take home. Uh, we, they, they heat their own sides at home and they, uh, we have uh, instructions for them to tell them what you know the times and the temperatures but everything's ready to go so the the complete um, Thanksgiving dinner includes the turkey that comes home hot and ready to be carved um, we make our own old-fashioned pan gravy we make a fresh cranberry sauce fresh mashed potatoes sweet potato casserole with pecans buttered sweet corn glazed baby carrots Jean's homemade sweet dinner rolls we let everyone choose either a vanilla cheesecake or a pumpkin cheesecake and they get an apple crumb pie to take home that's everybody gets that that's everybody the gets the apple pie and they choose but, i mean that whole they that's the that's, that's the it. package yes mm -hmm. you, you know that to Jeff? thank you um and I just lost what I was going to say. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You said that was the whole package. Yeah. Well, but your Thanksgiving is not a Thanksgiving. It's not. Well. <laughs> oh, for me. Yeah, for you're us. cooking like crazy. <laughs> well, this is true. We're busy working, and we're done by two o'clock. I have to say, we I really think we enjoy it. We we have loved doing this. There's okay. something about it. Um, first of all, I've gotten to know the customers over the years, and most of the customers come back every year or every other year because people take turns, mm -hmm. you know, with different families. Sure, sure. So I enjoy it because I just, you know, I feel like a connection with the, the customers that, that are coming to us. But um, we, at le for a long time, we would have, we would turn our bake shop into a little restaurant afterwards and set up for tables and bring the family to us. But after Jean died, I needed a change. And so we, we don't do that anymore. Um, but we have a lot of memories of big family dinners right in the bakery. You know, we'd move everything out and set up the tables and, and there would be about 20, 25 of us. But the last uh, couple of years since Jean died, we'll go to my sister's and um, we get there probably by the time we get there it's five and we're worn out because we've gotten I'll up bet. early yeah. and uh, they they're kind enough to wait for us so we can have dinner together and we actually do have Thanksgiving it's just a little later that's that's terrific you know what it is is if you enjoy what you're doing mm -hmm. and when you're like you said you deal with some of the same people over and over again there's got to be a feeling of accomplishment it is I mean I have to say when we first started I was a wreck because we weren't just catering for one family. We were, I was, we were taking the responsibility for, I don't know, we've done as many as 65 families Thanksgiving dinners. Wow. And so to th the first year, it wasn't that many. I think it might have been 13 families. I don't know, the second year was in the 30s and so on. But especially the first couple of years, what if they don't like it? What if they don't have enough? What if it sure. doesn't stay hot enough? You know, what if, what if? But fortunately, the response has been wonderful. And, you know, we get a lot of positive feedback. And they come back. And they tell their friends. And I think the great thing is uh, if you go out to eat on Thanksgiving, you never have the leftovers. Exactly. So at least you're giving them and that there's leftovers. And we planned it so that there's enough food, for you know, with that in mind. You know, uh -huh. we, we really did... Um, every the way that we do this is we have a spreadsheet set up that um, you know as they call in they tell me they're eight people or ten people or whatever the spreadsheet populates across with certain weights so that every they're not all getting the same package they're getting us the sizes that they need for the amount of people that will be eating it and it was always planned so that they could have munchies all weekend long just like they would if they made it themselves sure I, it's, it seems like a lot of work for you. It is. It is a lot of work, but, but we you're love smiling. It. We do. We you like it. Obviously, like it. We like and it. And as I said before, I think there's a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah, pride. You know, we feel good about it. We w these people. We send all these people home with this wonderful dinner. They get to enjoy the the day with their families, and you know, it's the one time of year that we can cater for a small group of eight people 
and we can we can make that happen because normally for us to cater for a very very small group it's we can't it's it doesn't make sense for us the way that we're built um, we're not a restaurant we're not a deli so sure. if somebody calls us and they want us to cater for eight people we could do it but it, it, I probably couldn't make it affordable for them yeah, you know we, well, there's say. a certain level that we have to um, a, a number of people that makes more sense for us and why don't we talk about that real quickly because you do catering yes we do and you do a lot I see you at a lot of functions I see you at chamber functions and, and various things mm -hmm. uh, why don't you talk a little about that okay um, well again this is one of the reasons we started in business to begin with was Gene what what his goal his dream was to be a caterer and we have been catering for a long long time um, again 33 years 82 was the first year we were in business and um, the kind of catering we do is is varied and um, we we basically do anything from um, a picnic a full-scale picnic um, menu to a brunch uh, we do cocktail parties and I can think of three in particular um, we're going to be doing uh, for Verizon Wireless on Christmas Eve morning. The ah. for I don't know how many years now we've been doing a breakfast for them, and so they they'll order. Uh, we'll actually bring in uh, omelets that we've made, um, uh, scrambled eggs, sausage, bacon, French toast, pancakes, that kind of thing. So no cheesecakes. Um, actually. Do they do? I think they do cheesecake. I would they think. Do bring some cheesecake and apple pie for dessert. I think my son would eat cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, so that's a breakfast. Um, uh, in that case, we actually make the omelets and then bring it and, and drop it off. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, we've also done parties where we'll do live, you know, like a, bye Jeff, a li live omelets, uh, live stations where we're making omelets to order. You know, it depends on, on the numbers. The, the Verizon party is about uh, 120. We've done for... 30 something years now um, Flemington Car and Truck Country we've done their summer annual picnic okay and they have had anywhere from 350 to 700 people for this picnic and it is a full scale uh, barbecue with you know soup to nuts we do you know hamburgers hot dogs chicken ribs um, we've done the the um, uh, pierogies, corn on the cob, steamed clams. Oh. Um, let's see, what else do we do? I'm the last hungry. couple of years, we changed it up a little, and we do um, we do a roasted pig for them. Oh. Um, we do the um, uh, the full desserts with apple pie, uh, assorted cookies, brownies, cheesecake. Last year and the year before, I think we did the cheesecake on a stick for them, where we brought in. That's your newest thing. Yeah, yeah, that is. We have that. That's. Um, Another sidebar for us. We just keep, you know, see going off a little bit. You know, it's changing things up just a little bit at a time. But see, I think that's, first of all, I think that's a sign of someone who um, is really into what they're doing that you can come up with new things and new. And and here's one of them right here that was just delivered. <laughs> Explain what this is. Okay, this is our graham cracker chocolate chip cheesecake cookie. We've yeah. called. We've we've ca we're not. We're not 100% sure that we have settled on a name for them, but at the time we're calling them Chookies. Gene Chookies. Is, my son okay. Gene isn't too crazy about that. I think it's a cute name. Um, but it's a graham cracker chocolate chip cookie. Um, it's just loaded with uh, I show it to the, camera. the little 10,000 count chocolate chips. And right in the middle. Cheesecake. It's cheesecake. So the, the thing with these is that so far they're all handmade. They're, um, they're rolled out with a rolling pin. The cookies get baked, and then we we pipe the cheesecake between the two. Now I'm going to open this up and show it to the camera too. I'm not used to having a camera in, on the radio, <laughs> but this is boy, the smell. Ooh, <laughs> not that it's a bad smell, good smell. Can you smell that, Bruce? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is this is our apple crumb pie. Apple crumb pie. Look we, at the size. We make of that. these apple. This is again one of Jean's recipes. Okay. It's Granny Smith apples. Lift it up. For um, you. Lift it up a little more. Okay. No preservatives and all butter crust. Is that good? These pies are the pies gonna slip um, out. Unbelievable. We we get the Oh it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, it's close to four pounds. Yeah. 
Whoa. So this again is one of the one of the products that we make that it takes a lot of hand work and um, here I'll close that up for you. It's a little tricky. Okay, we got it. Yeah, that must take a lot of time. It does. You know, ye yesterday they made 500 pies. <laughs> 500 pies. <laughs> We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Th this is the time. Now, if somebody's out there and they, they really would like to get your Thanksgiving dinner, how do they get in touch with you? They can go on our website. And, um, and the website is again? www.madalinascatering.com. Uh, on there, if you click on Thanksgiving, you can find um, where there's an order form. Uh, you can print it out, hand write it in, fax it to us, or I believe you can also email the order. Um, or you can just call us up and I'll take your order, or one of us will take the order over the phone. You can order a la carte items. It doesn't have to be the package. Um, so if you just wanted a turkey, you get a turkey. If they wanted just a turkey, I have a couple customers that do turkey and gravy every year. I have some people that call me. That I have one customer every single year. She does sweet potato casserole and an apple pie. Okay. And that's it. So it's whatever, whatever you like, however you might want to add to um, your own meal. That, that you know, A lot of people just really love to cook for Thanksgiving, but maybe uh, one or two items would make such a difference and make their life a little bit easier. Sure, sure. I, I, I'll tell you, I, I enjoy your cheesecake. I'm not a big uh, sweets type of person, but I enjoy your cheesecake a lot. Thank you, Richard. I really do. Um, <laughs> and these, I had one of these once. <laughs> in, in fact, I cut it in half and gave the other half to my wife. Oh, we good. Split it, but, uh, Today we brought you a pumpkin and a vanilla, by the way. Oh, so that, one is filled oh, with pumpkin and this one's filled with vanilla. Yeah, I, I can see the difference in the yep. color. Yep. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I'm not used to this camera thing yet. <laughs> I'm used to sitting <laughs> behind a, a mic in a studio and nobody sees me. Um, I think you look good. Oh. You just say. <laughs> I'll pay you later. I'll pay you later. <laughs> I don't know, Bruce. I know you're over there. I don't. You don't even have a mic, or do you have a live mic or not? Yeah. You got any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay. I just want to make sure that I was covering everything. Um, Janet, anything else you'd like to tell about your incredible life and uh, oh and your cheesecake <laughs> dynasty? Oh <my> <laughs> what else is there to tell? Let's see. Um, well, I'm very excited because we have recently added to the list of customers that we have. Um, we, as I said, um, we sell the cheesecake to the shop rights. Uh, Basil Bandwagon right in town sells okay. our cheesecake. Um, that surprisingly, um, Pine Creek Liquor Store just... They just um, opened up. Uh, yeah, they just opened up about, what, a year ago? They're and not too far from They're here. right across the street yeah. from us, and my sons apparently are customers, <laughs> regulars, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and they, uh, Ryan, the owner, um, somehow they got talking, and, and there's a freezer over there with our cheesecake and apple pie in it, and they, it's only been two weeks, and I think he's placed four orders. I, I None of us really knew what to expect, but it seems like a, a nice... Um, c a convenience for people to go into the liquor store, maybe grab a bottle of wine and maybe a cheesecake for a gift. Sure. I don't know. We just never thought about it. So we, we might have to expand on that business. But um, we, uh, what else can I tell you? We recently, um, I asked Joe Colalillo if he would be kind enough to help me expand our business a little bit. And um, he is very well known in the in the world of, of the shop rights in Wakefern, and I believe he's the president of Wakefern. Um, and he, is. he said to me, "I I would be happy to help you. What is it that you need?" And I said, "Well, I'd like to expand, but you know, I don't want to go. Uh, I, I'd like to do this carefully, um, just a few stores at a time. Do you know anyone that would be, you know, some of the other stores?" And and so he 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 put me in touch with. Um, the buyer from the village shop rights uh, owned by the Sumas family and I had a meeting with them and this summer we've been um, selling the cheesecake to four of their stores in Bernardsville in Morristown, East, the Han East Hanover or I guess they call it the Cedar Knoll store mm -hmm. uh, Sterling and Gar Garf Garwood 
Garwood. Garwood. Okay. And then just last week we delivered to four, three new stores, also owned by that family, um, the Hillsboro, Chester, and Washington stores. So we're, you know, it's, we need to expand. We want to expand. This is all good. Uh, what we need to do now is to build um, up a customer base in those places because that's the thing that scares me. My son, sons want to just go like gangbusters, and I get, I I know that it's important that that you grow your business, and we need to grow our business. But I want to make sure that we have a solid foundation under us, and sure. that the customer base, you know, that the customers know us. So what we're doing right now is we're focusing on uh, getting in the store and sampling and giving demos and. And really, right now, um, you know, if there are people out there that would like to help do that, that's we have a need for that right now. So that would be a wonderful thing if if we could find some other people out there that might be okay. interested in helping us with that. Jenna, <coughs> one of the things uh, I had to jump in because you actually are quite a television star now. You guys have. Uh, that's appeared right. on two. You, you should talk about that. Well, I, not me talk about it. She needs to talk about it. And your experience and what shows you're on and how people can find you because I'm sure those shows are archived online with the cooking channel. So tell us all about how that came about and what it was like and how people can watch those shows. Okay. Well, um, I think we talked a little bit about our, we started, to, we mentioned the, 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 the fact that we've been doing, we started doing frozen chocolate covered cheesecake on a stick. Yeah. Uh, we did a couple of events locally, like three or four years ago and we said you know what uh, I guess the first time we really did it was Shad Fest okay. about four or five years ago and um, it was kind of fun and people loved it and we thought well how do we expand on this and so we started to do more events and um, I found that that um, I enjoyed it and um, it was great to get out of the office and great to meet people and and watch watch them enjoy the cheesecake sure that was fun because you know, we make it, we sell it. I don't get to see them eat it or get to see their reaction, but I really do enjoy that part of it. But um, so we we basically needed to uh, find a way to make that a little bit easier. So my son um, found a, a trailer and, and converted it into a, a, a a, a concession trailer for us. It's basically an old pop-up camper. Um, he changed it up, and you know we literally crank it up when we get to the event, and we set up, and we're in business, and then when we're done, we put the lid down, and we drive home. We're good. So this past year, we he built a second one, and then by the end of the season, we had a day where we wanted to be in four different places at the same time. So we had another trailer that was. Um, uh, just you know an enclosed trailer and and on Wednesday he cut a cut a window into it and by Saturday we had our third trailer sure, on the, and sure. then we had another tent but my point uh, I'm getting off the, the track the the point is that we've got the the we're going out and we're doing these events and we were going to be at uh, Waterloo Village for St. Michael's Festival uh, early in the season in May I think it was uh, it was right bef right after Memorial Day weekend. Okay. And um, we got a call that the cooking channel was going to be uh, the show Carnival Eats that is on the cooking channel was uh, the host was going to be doing interviewing some of the um, the the people from you know with the different concessions at that festival and they were looking to pick who they might want to you know to interview. So they, the people that were um, in charge gave them our name, and we got a phone call, phone interview, which led to, you know, a couple more conversations, and they said, you know, they were considering us, and we were very excited, and, and then we found out that they, they chose us, and so uh, that was all set and planned for, um, I forget the date that they, that they filmed us, but it was er early in June, if now, I think it was the last weekend in May. Kay. And then we got, we had just joined the chamber in uh, the Lambertville chamber. Okay. And they um, contacted everybody and said that there was a another production company that was looking for mom and pop businesses that might be interested in going, you know, being featured on, on a show called 
the Great American Food Finds. In fact, we didn't know what the name of the show was at the time. Um, all we knew was that there was a show and they, they were looking um, for, um, they were trying to pick some fam family businesses. And uh, we, we contacted them and said we were interested, and gave them a little bio on, on uh, Madalena's. And an hour after I sent the email, we got the call from the producer, and uh, she said that you know she wanted to do a Skype interview with the boys and I, and we did that. And like the following week, they said, "You're in," <laughs> but they both wanted to interview us. Um, they both wanted to do their shows the same weekend. It was it was of course <laughs> it was crazy. So we we were interview we were on one show uh, was taped on Saturday and the other on Sunday the same weekend, and uh, it was. It was fun. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. So it's been a, a very nice opportunity, and they've rerun, um, especially the Carnival Eat show has, has co you know been on several times since. I think it's on different sh different networks, yeah. and um, so we've we it's it was a wonderful opportunity for us. Well, you certainly made a good impression uh, last week. You were able to come up and watch a taping of the kitchen. That's which right. Is, uh, and we appreciate you doing that, and uh, everybody enjoyed the gifts that you brought along, uh -huh. the homemade gifts. So <laughs> hopefully you'll be making more appearances on network television uh, and, you know, good response from everybody about what you did. And I'm sorry you didn't get to spend some more time with the with the uh, hosts and so forth. It was forth. a very busy day. Yes, it's always a busy yeah. day. So it w We enjoyed being there. You're always welcome to come back and uh, be in the audience. We'd love to have you. Well, so. Thank you, Bruce. But we also Nice job. We're, I'm talking with her to do a show here for yeah, us. Yeah, it's in the works, folks. So <laughs> yes. uh, you'll get to hear all the secrets on how and the cheesecakes are made. And, and now we know if she comes, she brings all kinds of stuff. Well, and that's why she's one of our favorite <laughs> guests already. <because laughs> I come with goodies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, if you feed us, you're on the air forever. Yeah. So that's that's the way it is. Also, we reciprocate with our guests. So obviously, we want you to have a Jersey Talk Radio T-shirt. Ah. So you can wear that around the shop and wherever that. you can. Uh, there it is. Designed by Richard. Richard Excellent G. Job. Absolutely. Uh, you know, people that are as old as Richard and I remember where a similar logo appeared on a record album many years <laughs> yes. ago, and it's <laughs> iconic. But uh, we didn't steal it; he made his own. But it's surprisingly just enough, even young people have said to me, "That reminds me of that." That's with right. Those lips with that tongue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. I think it's great. We appreciate you being here. Um, Thank you for having me. Kind of our inor inaugural program. I wish both of you all the luck in the world. And, you know, I know you're going to do wonderful. I was going to mention it. She mentioned uh, Flemington Car and Truck Country. Yes. And we should mention that Absolutely. we are Jersey Talk Radio, but the studio here is Flemington Car and Truck Country Broadcast Center, and that's where we'll be coming from. So we have a relationship with... Yeah, we're honored to be part of, yes, you know, partnering with th those and the other folks that have offered to be part of this. And, you know, the trust they put in us and the goodwill and putting their money forward is uh, certainly very humbling. And we're going to do our best to make this a, a an asset to the community because it can be a and very that's valuable and that's asset. that's why we had, on you, you had you on first. Yeah, because you know what? <laughs> Thank you. you I'm know, honored. Well, I grew up with Gene and... Uh, you know, I grew up here in Hunter County, and uh, West Jersey has a lot to offer. And I think we, we need to acknowledge the work that goes into local businesses. I, I agree. Mean, you know, you mentioned Colillo. Um, nobody has anything but good good vibes about what they've done in the greater community, how they treat their employees. Exactly. The same with uh, Steve Caliper and the folks over. I mean, it, it, they're iconic for a good reason, because they treat their customers right, and they also treat their employees right Goodness. that is a very rare thing in my experience traveling all over the world doing documentaries that's not as prolific as it should be so uh you know we are very very humbled to have them as part of our team as well as pat and heidi uh the, the, and and the ameriprise organization um you know we're going to be working uh, with jack cust and uh, the, the hospital and a lot of other organizations that I'm not at liberty to discuss yet until it's made public. But um, we're going to try to hold up our end of the bargain and do the right thing for the community as well, as well as the businesses, because without the businesses, we all starve. So. Well, you two are doing 
good things, and I know that you will do it well. We're going to try. I, we're we're going to give I'm it our There's always room for improvement no matter yes. what we do, and it's and we're going to try to make things we're better. We're going to give it our best shot. Absolutely. It's it's quite an honor to be the first in uh, – you know, this is kind of groundbreaking, and I hope that it catches on the way that I know it will after 40 years of broadcasting. But, you know, we're reintroducing local broadcasting, local community television and radio back into the community. And uh, there are other organizations that Rich has been involved with them, as I have. Uh, but this is a different spin on it. This is a full commercial broadcast operation. So it's a little bit different approach, and we hope that there's going to be something on there for everybody. Time will tell. Well, I am so excited to be here and be part of it. Well, we're so excited you brought us an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I'm thankful enjoy. For, for that. So. Enjoy. So, Rich, I'll let you take us out, and uh, well, thank you I again, Jenna. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank you for coming by. Thank you so much for having me. I know you're, you're to get you here because you're so busy. It is a busy time right now. It is. And, and I really appreciate the fact that I just made a call and you said yes. Absolutely. I would, I would, I'm honored to be here, and I'm thrilled, and especially to be here for your first broadcast. I, I'm so excited for you. Well, we're excited to have you. And I want to just thank everybody for watching, and uh, we will be back. We will be starting maybe next week. We're, we're working things out. Uh, when you do something like this, there's a lot of equipment and things to get working and, and all that. But uh, hopefully we're going to be up and running soon with broadcasts every night from four o'clock in the afternoon until midnight awesome so please stay tuned <laughs> we're done yeah. yep yep Thank you so oh. much. <laughs> I talk too much. I think I'm too wordy. I'm, I'm sorry.